Okay, so one of the topics that uh, we will be looking at is human enhancement. Uh, human enhancement has had wide coverage in the literature in the past two decades and basically focuses on the ways in which we could implement biotechnological advancements in our lives, specifically in uh, the way in which human be beings can uh, improve themselves beyond what is normally considered to be um, the standard. Um, so for example, uh, if as I'm wearing glasses, if I use those as a therapy for my short sight, it's considered as a way of restoring normality. But if I would be using some glasses that would allow me to see as a oak beyond the level that humans are normally expected to um, be on, then we would be talking about an enhancement. Of course, um, in the course of um, uh, the past two decades, as I said, there have been some cases where um, it was evident even for the media that the line that divides enhancement and therapy is not as neat as usually uh, thought. The case of Oscar Pistorius, a South African athlete who tried to participate in the Olympic Games despite the fact that he um, lost the use of his legs when he was a child uh, portrays a perfect example of what we mean by that. He, in times, thanks to his um, efforts and, and technological advancement that allowed him to use cheetah's prothesis, he was uh, running uh, uh, as fast as normal athletes, meaning he was in a position to participate and see if we could uh, run in the Olympic Games in China, in Beijing in 2008. And once he reached uh, the time needed to participate to that event, um, he, uh, he was not allowed by the Olympic Committee because they stated that his prothesis, which initially were meant to be just a therapeutic tool to allow him to move to begin with, even before running, were in fact an advantage, an unfair advantage, that uh, put him in a favorable condition comparing with his uh, normal peers. And of course this is um, an example that uh, al allows many questions to uh, be raised and uh, addressed. And part of uh, the topic that we look into uh, will deal precisely with, with those aspects. There are other forms of enhancement, like cognitive enhancement, that uh, are more and more common in campuses such as this one. Uh, what I mean by that is that the use of um, chemicals, medicines, such as Adderall or Ritalin, um, have become increasingly um, common among students in campuses across the globe because although they were initially uh, meant to help uh, people affected by ADHD or um, uh, uh, narcolepsy, um, now it has been found that they allow and help focus, they allow and help uh, being concentrated on one study. At times there are um, enhancers that allow memory to um, be increased, at least in the short span. And of course there too there are issues of fairness. Do we think that to be something that should be openly acknowledged by a student? Ultimately we are in a very competitive 
environment, in academia as in everywhere else, uh, in the job market. And sometimes being able to answer a question in a split second uh, less than a competitor um, could make a difference uh, uh, between getting a job or not. So obviously it's something that should be addressed the way in which we want to uh, supervise the implementation and use of those drugs. Okay, then uh, we can uh, certainly take into consideration the way in which brain-computer interfaces have affected um, our status as human beings and the way in which they could potentially be seen as enhancers or therapeutic tools depending on the context. A study at Brown University some years ago allowed a tetraplegic person to uh, finally move a robotic arm external to her body through just thinking of grasping a cup of coffee. That was possible thanks to the advancements in technology that we have had and of course it portrays scenarios that were unthinkable until just a few deca decades ago. So these uh, technological advancements um, are seen as uh, therapies, but they could easily lead to situations in which they are used to enhance our performances. And again, this um, raises a number of uh, ethical questions as how we should implement those uh, technologies. Um, another uh, new enhancement is instead not related to the brain-computer interface, but it has to do with the way in which uh, our um, gradual understanding of the brain is increasing and the way in which we could repair the brain uh, directly, so to speak. And one um, of the many recent studies that is being brought forth is that of trying to, by healing our brain, um, being able to re-establish um, the synapses that allow language to take place. So of course this would be a, revo a revolutionary advance, advancement, but at the same time it questions um, how the same knowledge could be again used to over um, pass our normal uh, limits and who should supervise the use of these technologies. So for example, in the case of someone that has suffered a damage in uh, his or her brain and is not able to speak anymore uh, their native language or the languages that they uh, had uh, managed to learn in the course of their lifetime, once we would be able to re-establish uh, an highway in our brain that will allow us to restore that capacity, then it's not an unthinkable to imagine that we could, uh, a bit like The Matrix or other science fiction examples, we could be able to upload uh, more and more languages in our brain pretty much directly. And in ideal terms, um, if everyone would be granted access to, th to, this, to this technology, it would uh, certainly be a progress for humanity. But um, as we all know, the world is not a perfect place and it's very likely that some will have the opportunity to access these uh, new technologies and having certainly a competitive advantage over other individuals in the job market again, or just as an experience of life, being able to uh, read uh, Confucius in Chinese would be an, an advancement for many Western or Arabic or English for that matter from, you know, for someone that does not speak the language at the time would be a, a great advantage uh, and that should be addressed. Um, the last um, aspect that uh, I would like to 
uh, take into consideration when it comes down to enhancements is the so-called moral enhancement. So many uh, scholars have been uh, trying to uh, assess if the discoveries that we have made in understanding how our uh, biochemical composition interacts with our um, uh, moral choices in um, individual personal um, at an individual personal level as as well as at a more um, societal level and it has been found that for example oxytocin or serotonin are substances that tend to affect the way in which we are harsh in a decision for example a judge um, that has to uh, make a verdict just before having lunch on average tends to be harsher in his or her decision than one that has just eaten and that is because the chemical imbalances in our body affects their harshness if you like so this knowledge is extremely valuable and um, can be implemented should be implemented probably but what uh, also is interesting to look into is what kind of threat goes with it if we are able to um, reach a situation a scenario in in which we know that uh, giving a, a certain substance let's say a moral enhancer to a person will make them less aggressive less violent less prone to engage physically with someone that they disagree with again in ideal terms we tend to picture uh, a more peaceful society but uh, again facing how the the world um, is out there um, one could question if a that's the best way of uh, interacting with another uh, another human being in all situation if I'm being attacked it might be uh, actually valuable for me to be aggressive because it's my way of uh, avoiding a rape or uh, being robbed or assaulted and and also of course the problem is uh, that it's it leaves room for uh, a dystopian future in a sense that all uh, our chances to choose what is right and wrong will be uh, reduced to a chemical reaction that at some level someone else has chosen for us to be the best way and um, it might be the best uh, way ultimately or maybe not but certainly it needs to be addressed and that's what we want to do with this topic.